Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video in the Painless Answers series, specifically to answer the questions from three people. First of all is to mention a comment from APRC talking about the fact that the way uh, a fixed wing motor typically turns, it's actually tightening the nut on the top and that's absolutely right, that's the way it works. We'll talk a lot more about that during over the next 10 minutes. Uh, then one from Ken talking about the fact that on multi-rotors it seems to be incredibly complicated. There's clockwise, counterclockwise, there's left hand, right handed threads, um, clockwise, anti-clockwise motors. So how does that all work? And then finally, a question from a gentleman called Brian, who uh, Brian was talking specifically about fixed wing motors because there's another wrinkle too. With a fixed wing motor like this, there are two ways that you can mount it. There's a traditional way where it's at the nose of the plane. This is typically referred to as a tractor setup where the thrust is being generated behind it and everything works perfectly. That's kind of how it's supposed to be installed. However, if you put it on the back of a wing or a plane where it's at the back, typically called a pusher. That's how I've got it set up in things like the Black Hawk and the Vorticont build that I've just done. Then it is actually turning in the wrong direction. So there are a couple of little wrinkles uh, that we'll talk about there as well. So stay with me if this is all new to you and that doesn't make any sense at all. Don't worry, I'll cover it all in the next 10 minutes. So let's start with the basics. Uh, before multi-rotors were a glint in our eye, this kind of electric motor setup is the default way everything worked. And that is that the way that the nut goes on top of the motor is using a standard right-hand thread, exactly the same kind of thread on the common nuts and bolts you'd find at your local hardware store. And the prop is designed to turn in the opposite direction. And that means that when the motor is spinning, the motor is turning in the opposite direction to the nut, and that means that the nut is always being tightened up. So if you're unlucky enough for the nut to get a little bit loose in flight, it isn't going to be ejected, because if the motor was turning in the opposite direction, the same direction as the thread, as soon as the uh, prop nut got loose, it would immediately be spat off. And that also means that the props for fixed wings always tend to be the same way too. So that the motor and prop turn in a way that means that the prop nut is held securely in position. And that makes a ton of sense. That's how it works if it is in a tractor setup on the nose of a plane. However, we then got into the whole world of multi-rotors. Now, multi-rotors need props turning uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise in order to work. And that makes life a little bit complicated because we have two turning clockwise and two turning counterclockwise. They need props that are in both directions, which was kind of a, you know something that wasn't common uh, in fixed wing unless you were running something like a, a dual motor setup, you know, with a motor on each wing. It's typical to have them counter rotating. But it was absolutely something that you had to do on all of your models if you've got a multi-rotor. Now in the early days of multi-rotor building, we all took fixed wing motors and popped them on. So they all had the same direction of thread, but some of them were turning in the wrong direction for the prop nut. So the prop nut, if it got loose, would spin off and be ejected and the prop would fly off and never to be seen again. And that is still occasionally the case. This is a Gephardt C Mark IV HD quad, and this has four motors with identical threads. However, it's using nylock nuts to keep everything nice and tight. And we'll come back to nylock nuts at the end of the chat. But then motor manufacturers realized that multi-rotors were a thing, started to produce motors specifically for multi-rotors, and produce them in clockwise and counterclockwise versions with right and left handed threads so that even if uh, your prop nut came loose, the motor was always turning in the direction that you needed to keep that prop nut nice and tight. You never know on a quad whether or not it's all the same or they've got left and right handed threads. Whenever you're taking a prop nut off, I'm always a little bit tentative. I'll uh, apply a little bit of pressure in one direction, then in the other direction to see which way it's going to slacken off. Um, 
sometimes it can be useful to actually put an L or R just to remind yourself. Um, but just be aware of that. It does mean that there isn't any standard. It, they could be right-handed threads. All of these are right-handed threads, even though two of the motors are turning in the way that if the nut came loose to be ejected, or it might be right and left-handed threads to suit the clockwise and counterclockwise rotation. Last little, little wrinkle we'll talk about is go back to our friend, the fixed wing motor. Now I talked at the beginning and demonstrated how the way it's supposed to work is as the prop is turning, it's actually keeping that prop nut nice and tight. And that is perfect if, as I said, it is in the front of the plane, in the nose or on the front of the wings, and the thrust is all being put backwards. Now, the way you install a prop is you always install the prop with the numbers, letters or legend facing the direction of travel. So in this instance, it's hard to see, but right in there, there's a little stamp with the prop size on it. So in a uh, tractor setup where the plane's behind it, I want to make sure that any legend writing is on this face because the thrust is going to be going backwards as the plane flies forwards. The wrinkle comes if I want to use it in that pusher setup where the plane or wing is here and this thing's at the back actually producing thrust in this direction. Now this means that this prop is now backwards because the numbers and letters are not facing in the direction of travel. So I would have to swap the prop over. To make it turn the right way, I'd also have to have the motor turning in the opposite direction as well. That now means that the motor is spinning in the same direction as the prop, so, um, prop nut. So as uh, the potential problem is, if the prop nut gets loose, it's going to be spat off and ejected out the back. So a couple of things out of that. First of all is do remember if you are mounting your prop as a pusher, make sure that all the legend numbers, writing, whatever, are still facing the nose of the model. Secondly, it will almost certainly mean that your fixed wing motor is going in the wrong direction and your prop nut will be ejected. A couple of things you can do there. Uh, get yourself some nylock nuts because you'll notice this nut that's been supplied with this particular motor is a regular nut. It will just take one little blade strike to potentially uh, shock this nut slightly loose and it'll immediately be spat off the back along with the prop and then uh, you're dead sticking it. Or the other option is to put an extra nut just behind this one to nip it up to make sure that it doesn't come off. Personally, I'd recommend go for your nylock nuts, uh, go onto eBay, that's typically where I get mine from, get yourself um, 5M4, 5M5 and 5M6, and then you kind of got all your bases covered. When you are using a fixed wing motor like this in a pusher setup, uh, put a nylock nut on it and it'll stop it coming undone. Also, if you are using a pusher setup with a fixed prop like this, well, even if it's uh, not a fixed prop, if it takes any kind of strike at all, uh, do make sure before your next flight that you do check that the prop nut has not come loose. Uh, it doesn't take much for it to come a little bit loose and then the prop will start slipping and you'll lose thrust and ultimately it will end in disaster. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that kind of had the question about clockwise, counterclockwise, why is it so difficult, why aren't the standards? Uh, it's because we came from this kind of motor and we've had to do a lot of messing about to make it work on these things. There aren't any real standards on this. It depends on the motors and threads that you have on here. Uh, but for fixed wing, it's kind of stuck with the same way, really. The only difference, again, is you can get props that are in the uh, non-default orientation if you have two motors on like a twin motored model. But the default looks like that. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.